Howdy everyone, it's me Grace and welcome back. It's been really warm and rainy here in Texas recently and the warmth and the wetness brings out all the creatures like frogs and snails and I just find them really interesting and so darn cute. I felt inspired to make some figures of them so I could put them around my house. The first creature I'm making is a snail. I'm taking some Lumen's Workshop Warbler scraps that were left over from my last project and warming them with my heat gun. Then I can use my hands to roll the warbler into a slug shape. This will be the snail's body. I considered making a slug at first, but wanted to challenge myself by making the snail's shell. To make the snail's foot, I'm cutting a larger piece of warbler around the body and attaching it. Then I can use my fingers to create the frills. I took another warbler scrap and rolled it into a pair of the upper tentacles. I used smaller pieces to make the lower tentacles. This project helped me use a lot of my warbler scraps because I'm using even more of them to create the shell. I rolled them into a cylinder shape and then rolled it into a spiral. Once I attached it to the snail's body, I used more warbler to build onto the shell and give it some more depth. Now that the snail's construction is done, I'm heating up the shell and etching line details into it. And now it's time to paint her. I decided to use some different browns and cream colors for the shell and the body. Snails come in a variety of different earthy tone colors. I noticed on a lot of snails, they start with darker tones near the spiral of the shell and are lighter near the snail's head. I layer different shades on top of each other for more variation in color. For the snail's body, I layer different cream colors and decided to add these darker spots last minute. I've never seen a snail with spots like this, but I just thought spots would look nice. After the paint was dry, I mixed up a two-part clear resin. I added the resin on the body and to parts of the shell to help it look wet. After the resin cured for a few hours, she's done. The next is this frog character. You might be able to tell that it was heavily inspired by the children's book series Frog and Toad, or even Over the Garden Wall. When I was thinking of making these pond creatures, this design definitely came to mind first. Instead of using Warbler this time, I'm using foam clay from the Cosplay Apprentice. I like using this foam clay for this specific project because it was a bit stiffer than the Lumens Workshop's lighter density foam clay. Both clays are fantastic for sculpting, but for a little character like this who needs to stand up on his own and doesn't have that many intricate details, I decided this clay would be best. I started sculpting his body into a froggish shape. This part will be his torso and head. Then I added two small balls on either side of his head. These are for the eye sockets. I carved his mouth with a sculpting tool. and used two cylinder shapes to create his arms. I used scissors to make finger shapes. He'll be wearing an outfit, so I created two cuffs to resemble rolled up sleeves. I used the same technique to create a belt and a collar for him. I pressed on two smaller balls to his eye sockets for the eyeballs and two oval shapes for the pupils. 
I cut two pieces of galvanized wire to the length for the legs I wanted. I bent the wire at the feet so I would have something to sculpt around when I'm creating the feet later. Sculpting the legs around the wire means Mr. Frog will be able to stand up on his own. I attached the legs to the body and stood him up to dry overnight. In the morning, I sculpted two little frog feet and sculpted them around the wire at the base of the legs. I used Warbler for the feet because it would be a lot stiffer and I wouldn't have to wait a day for it to dry. And now he's ready to paint. If I were doing this again, I would plasti dip his body so the paint would stick easier and have less chance of chipping later. In this particular case, I think it's all right since his job will be to stand in one place and to not be handled a whole lot. First, I'll paint the base colors. I painted Mr. Frog's skin with a darker green paint. His pants started with a base of dark brown and his shirt with a lighter brown paint. His eyeballs and belt buckle are of this mustard yellow color. I went in with darker and lighter shades to add more details and variation in color. My favorite part of doing this was adding all these light green spots on his skin. As a last touch, I made this fly out of Warbler and attached it to his arm. I thought it would be cute if this frog seemed oblivious that a potential snack was hanging out right there. This little tadpole was a bit of an afterthought, but I wanted the frog to have another friend. I created this little fella out of Warbler. I also painted him with the same colors as the frog. I mixed up more two-part resin, and I'm going to be adding this resin to the tadpole's body to make him look more like he just jumped out of the water. I had some extra resin left over, so I added some to the frog's eyes, mouth, and fingertips. After they dried, I noticed I added too much resin to the tadpole, and it was dripping a little bit right here. It looks like he's dripping wet, so maybe it's a happy accident. And with that, my trio of pond creatures is complete. Now the only thing left to do is to hide them around the house. I wonder if my future guests will be able to spot them. I'd love to give a huge thank you to my patrons. Y'all are the most welcoming, wonderful group of makers I could ever be a part of. And if you guys watching would like to join us, we would love to have you. We have a lot of fun on Discord. We talk about just about everything. Everyone there is going to make you feel right at home. This week's Maker of the Week is Third Son on Instagram. He made Magnus's Bracer and Axe from the Adventure Zone. I love the Adventure Zone and these props are amazing. I can't wait to see the rest of the costume. If it's your first time here and you like the video, I do hope you'll hit that subscribe button because I would love to see you back. Until next time, bye everyone.